The digital environment plays a huge role in many of our lives, yet for all of the opportunities and connectivity it provides to us to the outside world, it can equally have a detrimental effect. In this video, we look at Cal Newport's idea of digital minimalism, understanding how the current online space is designed to hold our attention and interest, and how to break out of the cycle of becoming dependent on checking the latest updates on social media, to instead only using what we need to in order to help benefit our lives. Cal Newport is a best-selling author of numerous books, including Digital Minimalism, Choosing a Focused Life in a Noisy World. His background and profession is as a professor of computer science, but in addition to his technical background, puts a lot of focus on psychology and philosophy in his work. However, before we really understand about how to go minimalist in a digital realm, we need to understand how digital apps are designed. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and WhatsApp all have some common factors in how they're designed. For example, have you noticed how all of them put alerts or notifications in bright red? And more importantly, do you know why this is? Simply put, they are designed to get your attention and get involved in a constant feedback loop to keep you returning to the apps. For all of the value and opportunities these apps bring, they're designed to make money, and to make money they need your attention. So with this in mind, they constantly apply small psychological tricks to constantly get your attention to open them. These in turn stimulate a dopaminergic response in the brain, leading to a negative feedback loop that results in addiction. For example, think of it as similar to playing with slot machines, whereby many times you often lose out, but every so often it will reward you, keeping you returning in hope of further rewards. Tristan Harris, who was previously employed at Google, has been particularly critical of how social media apps are designed in this way, often arguing how people using these apps don't always get to have control over the use of the apps and are effectively manipulated to constantly check their social media accounts. However, it's not all doom and gloom, but the start is that you need to retake your solitude. It might seem a strange concept, but one of the biggest factors in how the online space and social media works is it's designed to keep you constantly checking and returning for the latest news and information. However, this comes at a cost and that cost isn't small, as it reduces the time you get to spend in solitude, with your thoughts and without distractions. Let's take a simple digital example, listening to music, books or podcasts. Today, when walking around the street, you'll see countless people with headphones on or earphones in, listening to something while walking. While it might be a source of entertainment, it's also an exhausting practice, as people need a little downtime where they're not being influenced by an external source or mind. In the past, many times when people didn't have a digital device around, they would be left to their own thoughts effectively in solitude even if they were walking around outside and not actually physically isolated. Humans need this time alone, or in solitude, to help them regulate complex emotions and gain some creative insight, necessary for our mental health. And Cal Newport suggests starting off this process with a 30 day digital detox. This process involves taking all apps that aren't critical in your day to day functioning off your phone. Simply put, make your phone just that, a phone to call people on if and when necessary. During this process, you'll want to focus on identifying the long term changes you desire. The whole point of the detox is to help you reduce the feeling of needing to constantly check your social media or other online news and information. However, if you choose to do the detox and then return to your previous behaviours, there won't be any long term benefits. Therefore, as part of this process, Cal Newport suggests that this time be taken to really identify what's important to you. What are you going to do in the time you'd normally spend on social media? For example, this might be developing a skill or working on a craft. For others, it might be to spend more time with their family or kids. For some, it might be to get in shape to be healthier. 
Whatever it is, it's important to spend time focusing on those areas you need to develop and grow in, which will help you to lead life in a way that's more meaningful to you. Because ultimately what you'll find is when you find meaning away from social media, you'll be less inclined to return to your previous behaviour when you start to reintroduce it into your life. As you go through the detox and identify what's meaningful, you'll start getting an idea of how to approach the next step, which is identify the apps that you need. Ok, so by the time you've reached this point, you're probably well into your detox if not at the end already, and you've started to understand what's meaningful to you in life and what you want to put your attention towards. From here, you need to understand which apps are necessary to help you achieve the results you desire in life, to help you progress what you find meaningful, or at the very least, make difficult processes more efficient without the cost of it damaging your mental health and well-being. For example, all of the social media apps I mentioned before, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and WhatsApp, I use them all. However, I use them because they help me to do what I find meaningful. YouTube is a creative outlet for me to create and grow. Facebook and WhatsApp are mostly used to communicate with people I'd otherwise struggle to keep in touch with, such as those who live in distant locations from me. Frankly speaking, my use of Instagram and Twitter is minimal at best and I can barely say I use them. The critical point here is that all of these apps are used because they help serve a purpose, and I don't use them if they don't fulfil that intended purpose. The biggest factor in all of these is that I don't keep my phone logged into them, rather instead I only log in when and if I need them. This actually leads to the final step of this digital minimalism process, which is to identify how and when you will use the apps. By this point in the process, it's quite common that you'll be hesitant in how you use these apps and it's best to use this caution to help you understand how and when you'll use the apps. First and foremost, use apps for an intentional purpose. I can't understate this enough, as when they serve a specific purpose, you'll find it much easier to control your behaviour on them. However, equally important is understanding how often you use the apps. With this process, I'd suggest maybe scheduling limited time to help you achieve whatever your goal is, and then making sure to switch them off once that allocated time is over. It's for this reason I don't stay logged into them. I might set aside time to use them and log in at those moments, but otherwise I don't get notifications or the desire to check for the latest updates. With this approach, you control your use of the apps rather than letting them control you. So let's just reiterate the digital minimalism process again. First, do a digital detox for 30 days. Second, during this time, identify what's important. Third, identify those apps that will help achieve what's important. And last, regulate how and when you use these apps. With this, not only will you find you feel much better and happier with how you're living your life, but you'll start seeing productive results in doing what you consider of most importance to you. Hopefully you find this of value, if so, please leave a like and let me know in the comments how many hours in the day you spend on social media. Thanks for watching and if necessary, switch off.